It's part six of the upper extremity, and we just did the arm, anterior, and posterior compartments. Let's take a quick review of our little page here that uh, lists the brachial plexus. Remember, it's C5 uh, down to T1, just the way you like it, right? And um, we're also uh, gazing upon the um, situation here with regard to muscular cutaneous, took care of the anterior arm muscles. Who are those? Those are biceps, brachialis, and coracobrachialis. We just did the posterior, um, well, we did the whole posterior cord because we did axillary innervating deltoid, and then we did radial nerve innervating posterior arm, and that was the um, uh, triceps. There is one sort of in-between muscle that goes between arm and forearm. It sort of spans it, and it's also innervated by the radial nerve. And uh, that muscle is right here. Okay, so if you were, this is the palm of the hand here. If you were to take a look at your own forearm, and uh, this is a uh, right side, and then you were to look at your um, uh, anterior elbow here where your elbow... Uh, bends, flexes, and you were to grab over here on this sort of, uh, how shall I say, lateral wall over here. You can grab a whole bunch of muscle right here at that edge. Uh, can I do that? Let me, let me try to do that. Uh, I can't do it and show you at the same time, but over here on the right side, I can pinch. Um, <laughs> You have to imagine that you're uh, that you're taking between your thumb and your forefinger um, a little bit of muscle here, and you're pinching over here on the right side. You're actually grabbing three muscles when you're pinching there. Uh, what are you grabbing? You're grabbing the um, uh, brachioradialis, and then just deep to that are the two extensors. Now we're not going to do that uh, extensor business until we get to the posterior side. But just to complete the process here of what's innervated by the radial nerve, uh, we are going to pick up on this brachioradialis, which starts on the humerus and goes all the way down here to the radius. Okay, so it crosses this, um, this joint. Okay, and let's take a quick look on the preceding page here, what that looks like. It's the brachioradialis, superficial muscle of the lateral forearm. Um, although it does include a little bit of the arm itself, uh, forms the boundary of the cubital fossa. The cubital fossa is that uh, anterior elbow, right where it um, flexes anteriorly. It's referred to as the cubital fossa. Now this is going to um, go all the way down to the distal forearm, and beginning at the um, uh, the the humerus, the distal end of the humerus. And it's going to go all the way across the elbow, go all the way down to the radial styloid uh, process. Okay, that's a long ways. And uh, it's a synergist in flexing the forearm. Acts uh, to best advantage when the forearm is partially uh, flexed and uh, semi-pronated. Um, and then stabilizes the elbow during rapid uh, flexion and extension. Okay, so um, it's all about flexing the elbow. But uh, because it's pulling on the, uh, the thumb side, the radial side of the forearm, it's going to pull this way. So if you're slightly pronated, it, it pulls it this way. Okay, so now we're on to this next section here, which is the forearm. And we're going to deal with actually three layers of muscles here. There's going to be a superficial, an intermediate, and a deep layer of forearm muscles. Okay, so and notice carefully all of the... Um, how shall I describe it as uh, right now, um, as the uh, uh, sort of piano wires right here, the tendons. So we have our engines here, and then we have our tendons coming down. And uh, so we're going to begin with flexors of the wrist. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so over here we're going to have superficial muscles. And um, by the way, all of these are going to be innervated uh, by the median nerve. So we're going to be seeing lots of median nerve, one and a half muscles innervated by the ulnar. Okay, but most of the 
um, most of the nervous outflow here is going to be the uh, median nerve. Now there's one little detail that I need to remind you of, and that is, um, I think it was mentioned here, uh, it was mentioned as Hilton's Law. I wrote the word Hilton's right here just to remind me of something. And uh, so let me just articulate Hilton's Law here. Hilton's Law states that um, if I, I have a muscle and it flexes a joint like the elbow, then uh, whatever nerve innervates that muscle that flexes the elbow is also going to innervate the joint that is being flexed and the skin overlying it. So that means musculocutaneous was innervating the um, anterior arm here for biceps brachialis and so on, flexors of the elbow, which means the skin here, if you touch the skin right at this spot, uh, the skin is innervated also by musculocutaneous. And that pretty much goes away right about, I don't know, maybe about here or so. Goes down about that far. And then once you get past that, then pretty much everything is related to median nerve for the most part, except for out here and the uh, digiti minimi end over here, the fifth and part of the fourth finger, uh, we're going to be having uh, the ulnar nerve uh, innervating uh, the skin out this way. But from about here onward, it's going to be all median nerve. Okay, so that takes care of Hilton's Law. We'll, we'll revisit it a few more times. Okay, then um, the other thing you'll notice is, do you see how a lot of the muscles here are coming from over here? Um, this right here is listed as the medial epicondyle of the humerus. So we're going to see that as a common feature of origin. Let's check it out. Uh, here we have the pronator teres, medial epicondyle, medial epicondyle for the flexor carpi radialis, medial epicondyle for the palmaris longus, and uh, again medial epicondyle for the flexor carpi ulnaris. So that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, we have four superficial muscles. Pronator teres is a short little muscle, and it's um, it's right in here, okay, and it's mostly, it's a pronator. So it goes from the medial epicondyle to the radius. And uh, when you go there and you move the radius, you're going to be pronating. So that's the deal, from the medial epicondyle over to the radius, pronate. Okay, so you're going to be pulling, pulling the thumb this way, pronating. Uh, so here we are in the supine position, and we're going to basically flip the hand over. And that's what uh, pronator teres does for a living. We have flexor carpi radialis. It's also starting at the medial epicondyle, going to the second and third uh, metacarpals. And uh, where are they? Um, they're basically, we're just going to go to the base of them here. And here we have the muscle right here. This is the flexor carpi radialis. So it's on the thummy side over here. That's why it's saying radialis. And uh, basically, it's going to flex the wrist right at that point. Okay? So that's uh, that's the second superficial that we look at. Okay? So powerful flexor of the wrist. Uh, it's also going to abduct the hand. Abduction, remember, is uh, the uh, movement away from the body. So in addition to flexing the wrist, it's also going to abduct duct. Okay, so it's going to flex and uh, and pull it, pull it, ab, duct in that regard. Okay, so um, let's move right along. That's our action. Um, then we're going to be having palmaris longus. Only 80% um, of people, 1 in 5, 20% do not have this muscle. So check yourself on this. You might be one of the 1 in one in five people. It's pretty common. Uh, medial epicondyle down to the palmaris uh, aponeurosis. Uh, remember the aponeurosis is a flat tendon overlying. What we see here is not that. Uh, there is still a tendon above what's uh, being seen right here. So here is the um, palm. Uh, here we have it, palmaris longus going down here. And again, we're just going to get a nice even flexion of the wrist. Then we're going to be having our exception to the rule right here, 
which is a flexor carpi ulnaris because it's innervated by the ulnar nerve. It's all the way over to the digitiminimi side. And so over here, we're going to be going to the, um, again, uh, starting with medial epicondyle, but then going to the pisiform and the hamate bones at the base of the fifth metacarpal. Uh, we're going to be a, fl a powerful flexor of the hand. We're going to adduct the hand, pull it uh, this way a little bit instead of this way. Okay, so there's going to be um, uh, adduction, but mostly powerful flexion of the wrist right at that spot right there. And that's the superficial layer. We go on to the next layer next.